but that we've seen in past when Gunjar had left TK back in the day, and it was always the fact that you left our team. Like there was always a high right. animosity. Now it's the opposite. Where Theory and um, you know Theory and Gunjar on the same team, and now Neslo's now on the opposite side trying to make yeah. a name for himself. And Neslo rebuilt under the Echo Fox organization, bringing a global esports organization right into Call of Duty esports. He is uh, he, he's certainly grateful for that experience. I've had him on my show, Play for Picture, for a couple of interviews, and he's talked about how he's trying to build himself up as a leader and as a captain and growing as a person. He's really sort of changed his entire attitude around from this very uh, sort of emotional emotionally um, vulnerable player in a series to just this sort of like leadership veteran kind of role. And I, I think that him alongside a player like TCM who's really started to come up towards the advanced warfare scene, seeing those two together is going to be awesome. And it's just, it's just so interesting to see these two veterans facing off against one another on different teams. Now, as the Call of Duty scene does love, and myself included, we love a storyline. That's exactly what the series should provide for you guys. Of course, Retaliation Hardpoint going to be map number one. It seems that TK, according to Pro Players Talk, Seems that they are going to be on the more preferred side to start off this one. Seems to really like that rotation over toward Cat to Bike Path, and of course the rotation into Grave. Seems that the TK will have a little bit of advantage here off the start. Going to be going on board with Mr. Gunjar here. As Gunjar the MV4. is dangerous. This man has not slowed down a bit. Such a dangerous assault rifle player. I'm looking forward to see what he can do. All the damage throughout this entire map. He should be a huge factor for TK. However, we're seeing Colchan and Happy dominate the kill feed. That's three kills for Happy. One for Colchan. Expect to see him push up and take adv advantage of the map pressure that TK has established right off the break. Yeah, currently over the toward that curb. We talked about Colchan back in Black Ops 3. Obviously a major majority with that TCN team. was always a major Slayer to watch out for, and also a very nice sniper as well. But of course, TK off to a hot start here as Echo Fox trying to pile on the points a little bit. And of course, a lot of contestant hills. Of course, rotation is going to be in everyone's mind as that will be coming in shortly over toward Bike Street. But of course, Nestle currently locking it down 3 1 off the break. Can he make it 4 1? Is the question as his teammate will actually clean up that kill. There'll be a little bit of a lead for Echo Fox. Rotation will be coming in shortly. Nestle's got himself a three streak and no competition around the corner, so he's awarded with the scrap time. His team, however, needs to set up for this rotation. Colchan's not making it easy as he opens up this next hard point with two kills. Now, Nezlo on the rotation is actually going to team kill methods. This is, again, going to set Echo Fox at a really difficult disadvantage for this hard point. This is indeed happy in the back. Players coming to our plot. He should drop very, very quickly. Thankfully, he's able to get one in response, but it will be Echo Fox who currently has control. Mosh, thankfully that trophy able to lock it down for a time, but here comes the push from TK. Jerry ends up dropping from Cat. Gunjar nowhere near, but we'll be happy trying to support his teammate Colchan. Nades are absolutely going to be coming into this map. Expect them to not slow down whatsoever. Colchan still locking it down as TK starting to get a little bit of a lead. So Happy's in a pretty solid position here. This is sort of where you might expect your AR player to sit on the stairs. He can kind of wall bang anybody that comes up through scaffolding there. However, just 20 seconds left on this hard point, Echo Fox gave a lot of free time to TK there. And so they're going to decide to rotate and try and get back towards this area where Happy is anchoring at. He's taken down off of the anchor. That's Gunjar that follows up with two kills, though. So that's huge. We see two kills on the rotation, and we see Colchan getting awarded with like 20 seconds uncontested, at least 20 seconds in that hard point. Echo Fox isn't going to win this rotation despite giving up the hill so early. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly right. I mean, it was, they, they left 20 seconds away, and now they're not really getting anything awarded for it. We'll see if they can maybe get a few points here. As, so the kills might go in their favor. Of course, opposite team going to be spawning toward that back street area. And uh, it seems that, you know, while, while this is kind of important, a lot of teams will kind of give this away after about 30 seconds, 20 seconds, they'll kind of get that rotation. Because everyone know, knows, when it comes in a broken building, that without question is the money hill for this map. And his methods in position, in graveyard, is able to catch two players. Has a little bit of time to breathe here. There is one TK player just around the corner, and he knows that. He's just trying to figure out exactly which door where this player is going to push in from. However, the Echo Fox players are swarming. Mosh is the one to wrap back. Find that kill. One more player on the front line. That's Happy. And the rest of TK are going to go ahead and set up for a new hard point down to oh. Broken. I think Happy pushing that hill by himself was perfectly fine because he actually dies and then ends up spawning with his team in the new hill. So I think that, that was perfectly a perfectly fine push, even if it was one versus four. Right, of course, players coming in actually on the flank to be three and four methods, and Neslo trying to come on the flank here. It seems they actually have been awarded some of the good spawns for the time being. Of course, can be trying to spawn over on that catwalk side, but it seems that Gunjar trying to prevent that one from going down. K bar in hand. Occasionally, like to see him mark a R3K on this map. Seems to do that on some occasions, but K bar seems to be the one that he's more preferring. Ends up losing that one on the head glitch. I like that play for methods. Well, he's not getting hill time. He's at least locking this one down and watching the flank constantly, but a big pinch comes in from TK as they'll start to get some points. So we look at our, take a look at our scoreboard in the top right corner of the screen. We're seeing uh, TK in control of the hard part. A little bit of contestion coming from the likes of Echo Fox and this Broken Hill. But we're seeing TCM 
currently 4-11, and 11, and I feel like him and Mosh are sort of that deciding factor of how Echo Fox is going to slay. So when you only have one of your sort of stronger slayers in the roster really going off, it can be a little difficult. However, they're still in the lead by about 30 seconds, so if they can continue working at whatever Mosh is doing, that can be hu a huge win factor for them. But you definitely want to see TCM pick it up. If you see him pick it up, I think they definitely run away with this game. Oh, for sure. That's something that I saw in their last series, actually. Uh, you know, they ended up losing the, to C9 in Game 5. It was the fact that the reason they ended up bringing that one back in the two respawns uh, in Game 3 and Game 4 was because he had an absolutely fantastic performance. TCM, without question, at least in that previous series, was the major factor. He ends up They end up losing that first game 250, like 106, I believe. He, he went 9-20. and 20. He goes to the next up blink. He goes to the next hard point. I think in the hard point, he dropped like 37 kills, and they end up destroying the side of C9. So I completely agree. I think if, C9, if, if TCM starts to go off, that's when Echo Fox starts to succeed. Yeah, and another, another point about this Echo Fox team is they just got done playing a best-of-five series and went all the way down to yeah. the wire, only to just lose in the most heartbreaking fashion with a play from Aegis of Cloud9. That was pretty and crazy, man. You know, they got to they gotta be a little worn out here, right, coming through after another best-of-five series. And they also got to be a little upset. Like, that's, that's really annoying to lose that way and then they're in such a huge match for them in terms of like you know there's the storylines between TK and Echo Fox players so this has got to be pretty tough here however they're still leading this game by about 50 seconds Mosh currently double positive at the moment and TCM slowly bringing himself right back into this game in terms of KD yeah I mean you look at the scoreboard and you say it's, it's definitely kind of one-sided for sure I mean you said Mosh absolutely kind of carrying the load kind of sometimes being the backpack of the team and the fact that they still have the lead it's pretty crazy to see, but of course, we're going to rotate back over as the first side rotations are through with. We rotate back to bridge, and nades are full out. Method, Smosh, and Nesco actually all picking up kills in response, and Colchan, the last alive in the hill, currently kind of getting pinched thanks to those spawns being flipped, but Gunjar currently inside of Graves, trying to look over spots clear just to his left, able to make that one happen. So, still going down, Echo Fox still with the lead, and it seems that Nestle is starting to bring it up as well. There it is, Nestle. Playing in a power position, going to push up. This is similar to what we saw in the opening break, except in the favor of Team Caliber. Colchain, though, is going to be able to shut him down. Gunjar also finding a kill. Hill time still going in favor of Echo Fox. As you can see in the top right corner of your screen, Methods is the one to get that last bit of time. And so now, as the rotation comes in towards Market, TCM's trying to play this little pinch that he might have. However, this is not going to be an easy gunfight with the OSA. Marshall's going to get the better of him in that instance for sure. And now we have Theory in position. Firm to kind of maybe stand the head glitch, but he ends up getting rushed and he ends up getting somebody's dropped for it. So one separate in 118. Echo Fox still looking great when it comes into retaliation. Hard point. Mosh currently up top and broken. Shuts down one, nearly, nearly shuts down the second. Wouldn't surprise me thanks to the great start that he's had to this particular map. Of course, currently in Lower Street or Bike Street. Rotation's going to be coming in shortly toward that Graves Hill. TCM trying to push up through Bike Shop, able to find one happy. Lunar responding as well. Big play there coming in from TCM. Rocks the rewind. Wasn't exactly a player to the exact angle that he was looking at, but he gets a kill anyway. So nearly, I believe it'll be at 200. Will Echo Fox be at TK? Absolutely getting destroyed, which is not at all personally what I had expected. Yeah, I thought we would see a much bigger game out of players like Gunjar and Colchan for them in terms of the slaying column. We saw a big start from Happy, but uh, I haven't really seen too much to follow it up. Um, Colchan, though, trying to stop them on the rotation. Not able to do so. Three kills going in favor of Echo Fox. Expect TK to spawn out way towards last hill. And actually, Echo Fox players are spawning out further than TK, despite Echo Fox getting so many kills here. So that's going to be dangerous for Methods. He has no backup, despite spawning the enemy team out. Yeah, they get that market spawn, which is pretty uncharacteristic. It looks like one player might have been out of position, potentially. Colchain able to spot one toward tank, shuts him down as TK tried to bring a little bit of a comeback into this one. Gunjar locking this one down, a lot of free time. Getting a second to evaluate what's going on in the map, but as his teammates know that, hey, it wouldn't be a bad idea if we try to go ahead and rotate toward that building. Is oh, They're going to give a so lot of time away. Time. But it looks like Echo Fox might try to go for a last second push. One player there to his left. He's not able to finish it off as Gunjar, so Echo Fox going to be awarded that time. That's going to be big. Question is, can he win that gunfight? That is huge. That's going to be a good 15 seconds awarded to Echo Fox, and with the lead they already have, that is pretty detrimental if you're TK. Huge gunfight win right there. It looks like Team Caliber is trying to set up for this broken hard part. Gunjar in a solid power position is able to find one kill. However, efficient trading from Echo Fox, they respond immediately. Now, three TK players in the hard point. Echo Fox seems to have a pretty, uh, pretty pretty dispersed kind of like push here. There's, there's three players coming in from Mark that kind of spread out far apart, and then there's one coming in from Bridge. Loses that gunfight. So now we have to see how these three players can break the hill from the back, or if they can't, because it looks like we have Happy or Theory in position that was able to stop them. TK trying to rally as Theory is able to find one. Cold Chain in response is able to finish that one off. So TK getting some points here and there. This one is not at all done. A 50-point advantage right now for Echo Fox. Of course, only 30 seconds away from walking away with this game, number one. 
but trying to bring it back. It seems that the side of TK slaying it out as it stands. Doomjar ends up dropping from the side. Cold Chain does as well. Theory able to respond, trying to hold off for his teammate Happy as Theory also drops. So in the end, four do go down, and it will be a good amount of seconds in some cases awarded to Echo Fox. They're going to get even closer to that 250 mark. There it is. Echo Fox getting a lot of time here. They should be able to close it out on this next hill if they play their cards right. Just a few seconds. If you take a look at the scoreboard in the top middle, top middle of your screen, they're 14 seconds away from closing it out. And as they rotate over to Hallway, a lot, lots of gunfire going down in the hallway. However, at the end, it's going to be Echo Fox that comes down on top and is awarded with the initial hill time. Method is able to shut down Gunjar. Colchan responds with two kills of his own in some hill time. But there it is. Mosh coming through is able to shut him down. Gunfights going, down, going on, excuse me, Theory. Trying to shut down that Centurion, kind of being a little bit of a nuisance inside the base, but only three more seconds needed for Echo Fox. Two, one, that's going to do it. That's going to be Gainer one, Retaliation Hardpoint going over to Echo Fox, 250 to 192. Now, Fox, I'm not sure if we kind of expected that one to happen. I was kind of leaning toward the side of TK. I mean, if you look at their matches versus C9, you know, they both kind of went down 2 to 0. TK's able to close it out. Echo Fox isn't, but... Echo Fox, it seems that that last, you know, Game 5 loss, which is very detrimental, I would imagine, didn't really seem to affect him that much. Well, you know, time can... We, we can really only tell over time. This is just one map following that best of five series. You know, maybe if they do find a loss in this series, that ends up de be de being devastating enough for them to allow Team Caliber to come back on them in this series, right? So we don't really know. Right now, they're definitely starting off well in the retaliation hard point. So if it's up to them, they'll definitely keep it up throughout the rest of the series. Yeah, I'd imagine so. I believe to, to kind of break down this next map, we're going to be having Scorch, s and uh, I believe except it's going to be a 1-0 advantage, like we said, for the side of Echo Fox. Now, your thoughts on Scorch S&D between these two teams? Scorch S&D, well, for Search and Destroy in general between a lot of these teams, we're not really, there, there's nothing that, um, they haven't shown anything that we could really use to exactly, like, know what they're going to do. You know, Search and Destroy is in a very experimental stage right now in the beginning of Infinite Warfare, especially with a lot of the bomb sites being moved, you know, less than a week prior to the event. So some strategies are going to be different. However, in terms of like pushing for drill, I think that we're going to see a lot of teams going towards that map, that part of the map here in Search and Destroy. A lot of offensive executions towards that side of the map. Yeah. As far as what team does it favor, I personally think that Gunjar is incredible on this map in mm -hmm. every game mode. I think this is one of his.